Hi, Heather. Do you have a minute? Hi, Erica. How are you? How are your wedding preparations coming along? That's the thing. You are Ken's mother, and I am sorry, but I don't want you to come to our wedding. Huh? What do you mean? I am the mother of the bridegroom, remember? But I'm sorry. You are a single mother, right? Why are you asking me that? I mean, yeah, I have raised him on my own. Moreover, I heard that your marriage was a shotgun wedding. But you ended up becoming single and raised Ken on your own, didn't you? That's right, but what does it matter? Are you trying to say that there was something wrong with the way I raised him? That's not what I mean. But that kind of thing is not good for your reputation to the public. What reputation? A shotgun wedding that ended in divorce and becoming a single mother is kind of sad and off-putting. Are you being serious? Can't I say that I don't want my family to know that Ken is from such a family? Frankly, I'm embarrassed by that. Embarrassed? I don't think Ken would think that way. No, I'm embarrassed. I haven't told my parents or friends about this. So if you don't come to the wedding, I won't have to explain to everyone. I'm trying to avoid the hassle. I want you to pretend that you and him are disconnected. So please don't come to the wedding. Ken is my only son. Did he agree to this? I haven't told him yet. Don't tell him anything unnecessary. I will explain it to him. You can't do that. Your actions are the same as denying my existence. Well, I guess that's true. Because he is on a career path and on his way up the corporate ladder. But you are not. From now on, you will only be his baggage. Baggage? I thought I had raised my son well so far, even though he had a single parent. I never thought I would hear this from someone who's going to be my son's wife. Well, to be honest, I looked down on you ever since I found out that you were a single mother. That's why I don't want to invite you to my wedding. It's too miserable to be a woman whose husband ran away from her after a shotgun marriage. Huh? You didn't hear anything from Ken. Because it's taboo among us to talk about you. I don't want to hear a story about some poor, miserable woman. And when I hear it, I don't know how to respond. It darkens my mood. How can you say these things? Moreover, Ken is a good family-oriented guy, and I don't think he would ever think like that. He's fine without you. He has a connection through his work, and I got a free dress from a world-famous designer. So we don't need your help at all. You haven't heard that story properly from him either. You should have a proper talk with him before you speak to me this way. It's a waste of time to have that kind of conversation with him. It's too embarrassing that you got a shotgun wedding and became a single mother. This is how I feel, and Ken should agree with me. Therefore, I will not invite you. You should talk to Ken. There is nothing more I can say to you. I suggest you have a proper talk with him before you do something you'll regret. Hey Ken, about your fiance, Erica. Has she said anything strange to you? What, Erica? Nothing in particular, no. What's wrong? Did she do something? About the dress, about your father. Are you talking to her properly? I'm trying to talk, but she won't listen to me. She doesn't want to hear about it, especially when it comes to my family. But I'll tell her before the wedding. You'd better. 
who she seems to be wrong about a lot of things. She's the type of person who, when she gets an idea, just goes with it. Well, that's one of the cute things about her, but I have to admit, she's a bit of a handful sometimes. I see. If you're happy, that's good, but anyway, please explain things to her properly. You're right. She and I are going to be a family from now on, and I have to explain it to her. I'll have to tell her not to say anything bad towards you. She's already said something to me. What? What did she say? It's nothing. Well, I know you're busy with your work, but don't overdo it. Hey, you're not planning on coming to the wedding, are you? Huh? You still haven't talked to Ken properly, have you? No, but that's not the point. Whether I talk to him or not, I'm not allowing you to come to my wedding. Why do you hate me so much? Maybe you should listen to what people say. I don't want someone with your background and reputation at my wedding. You really are rude. You seem unwilling to listen. I told you I don't want to hear it. You'll ruin the wedding, so please don't come. Oh, okay. Then I won't go. I don't want to speak with you after this either. Do as you please. I know you're a crazy person, but I put up with you because you were the one Ken chose. I am no longer interested in you. If you want to disassociate yourself from me, you can do so. I have no problem at all. I'll do so then. This has taken a lot of the burden off of us. Goodbye. Don't come to my wedding, shameful woman. Goodbye. You don't have to contact me anymore. Hey, Heather. Would you please pick up the phone? Who is this? It's me, Erica. You have no right to call me by my first name. We're strangers. I'm sorry for everything. Really. You can come to the wedding today, right? No, I don't intend to. What? Why? Because you told me so yesterday. Moreover, you were very rude and outspoken to me. I only did you a favor not attending the wedding. What's the problem? I didn't know about the dress. Oh, I see. It was a shame to learn on the day of the wedding that the world-class designer Ken was referring to was me. I'm so sorry, Heather. I can't believe I was going to have you bring me a dress that you designed. I told you, don't call me by my first name. I don't intend to become family with you. Please don't say that. Ken said he was planning this dress thing to be a surprise. So he didn't tell me. So this is not my fault. That being said, it's not right to blame Ken. Regardless of the circumstances, the fact remains that you were super rude and disrespectful to me. Nothing you say now will change my mind. Please don't say that. I can't have a wedding without a dress. Where is my dress? It has already been delivered to the venue. I am a professional. I would not personally deliver a dress. But I don't think you need that anymore. What? What do you mean? I just heard from Ken. He said the wedding is going to be cancelled. What? I didn't hear that. You never listen, do you? I'm sure he was telling you exactly what he was doing this time too. No, you're kidding, right? I didn't think he meant it. It must be a joke. Ken has already contacted the guests on his side of the table. You too need to contact yours as soon as possible, or your guests will arrive at the wedding venue. I think they might get a little upset with you. Wait a minute. I really didn't think the wedding would be canceled. I think Ken got too emotional. If he calms down, he will understand. 
He has a calm personality. He is not the kind of person who judges things emotionally. He's properly informed his invited guests that the wedding is cancelled. I guess he has completely lost all intention of marrying you. Oh no, you have to talk him out of it. Please do something. What do you want me to talk to him about? You have to convince him to marry me. Suddenly cancelling on the day of the wedding is just cruel. How dare you ask me for a favor? That doesn't matter now. If I can marry him, I will apologize to you afterward. You're a real piece of work. I have no intention of helping you at all. You caused this, so you have to take care of it yourself. Huh? You won't help me? You and I are strangers. And it seems to me that I should prevent him from marrying you. To protect my own son. Why do you say that? He would have regretted it if he got married to you. He's still young, so he's still so naive. Oh, and while we're on the subject, please take care of the dress fee, okay? What? If you were to marry him, I would have given you the dress as a gift. But now that the wedding is cancelled because of you, you will pay for the dress that I was going to gift you. Huh? The wedding is really cancelled? I'm sure Ken has explained that to you as well. You must have signed a contract. He might have mentioned it. It's obvious. The dresses I design are expensive. Just because you're my son's bride doesn't make you safe. In the contract, it also mentions if the wedding is cancelled, that there would be a cancellation fee in that case. I didn't read the whole thing. I didn't know. It's your own fault, right? I will charge you the full amount, as stated in the contract. What? How much is that going to be? That's about three years of your annual income, I guess. I just quit my job. How dare you? Then you'll have to work again. By the way, I don't blame you for not listening to Ken properly. But I was a single mother because my husband passed away. And yet, you look down on me that I got a shotgun wedding. You should be a little ashamed of your little outbursts. Huh? I didn't know. I'm so sorry. You should reflect on yourself and stop judging people without even knowing them well. Well then, before you embarrass yourself, you might want to inform your guests that the wedding has been cancelled. Goodbye, you shameful woman. When Erica learned of all the circumstances, she was in a panic. She pleaded with Heather to come to the wedding, but was ignored. Moreover, Ken, the groom, also found out about Erica's true nature. He called off the wedding. The cost of canceling the wedding was to be split between them. But Erica ended up being charged the fee for the dress as well. And the big house they were going to live in was to be sold off. And Erica was devastated. She shamelessly asked the company she left because she was getting married to hire her again. She was then laughed at by people at work. Her ego was ruined. She was also very upset, but it was too late to regret it. Heather is glad she was able to stop her precious son from marrying an evil. She later moved abroad and forgot all about Erica. She is now able to focus on her work. When will Erica finish paying off her dress debt?